I'll begin the recording and we can jump right in. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Roger. Shalom, everyone. Welcome. I hope that you are doing well this evening. Like Roger shared, I am Miss Misty. I am the proud principal, proud head of school of Staten Island Hebrew Public. Uh, and Roger is wonderful, is so is so great. And, and thank you for putting all this together and having our families join us, our future families join us this evening. So thank you, Roger. Um, here is our agenda. We, we've done introductions, but there's more to my school. Um, I would like for you to meet part of my staff. Uh, we'll talk about what is a charter school. Roger talked a little bit about lottery and eligibility, and we'll go deeper into that. We'll talk about our beautiful brand new building, um, and then we'll dive deep into what does it look like? What can you expect your child to go through on a day-to-day? And then we are Hebrew public. So what does that look like in terms of our curriculum? And we'll talk about Hebrew and Israel study, Israeli studies. Uh, we do have after school programming and then transportation is always, always, always critical. And we'll, we'll dive deeper into that as well. And then we'll leave some time for questioning and answering. So that is me on your left. Um, I am the head of school, Misty Awan. And my right hand ladies, who I could not do this work without, um, Tashia. Miss Tashia is our assistant head of school for operations. So she helps lead the school operationally, facility wise. And then my amazing dean of culture, dean of students, is Miss Yasmin. So what is a charter school? So we are public school, we are tuition free, and we are open to all with no admission requirements or entrance exams. Um, students are admitted by lottery, which will be on Wednesday, April 5th. We are held to the same standards as traditional district schools because we receive public funding. We also follow the New York State um, standards for education uh, and applying to a charter school does not affect your chances of getting into any other school. So the lottery and eligibility, what that looks like is students are admitted by lottery. If we receive more applications, then we have available seats. And then the preferences will be given to any family who lives in Staten Island, which is our district 30, uh, district one, and any family residing in New York City may apply, but the preference is given to families that live within Staten Island. Siblings, if your child already attends and you have a sibling um, or another child that wants to attend, they receive priority um, when it comes to our lottery. And then students born in 2018 or later are eligible for kindergarten in 2023-2024. You'll see here off to the left is the deadline to apply is April 1st at 1159 p.m. And then our lottery date is Wednesday, April 5th. So just around the corner, believe it or not. And I do want to jump in and share one more thing for the families yes. watching. Everybody probably knows this already, but it never hurts to repeat it a few extra times. So Staten Island Hebrew Public is a growing school. Uh, so this year we are serving grades kindergarten and one, and we will be growing a grade each year until we are fully grown. Uh, so next year we will serve grades K, one, and two. So hopefully everybody that is joining tonight um, has a student entering that grade. And if you don't, we can connect offline and uh, I'll be happy to connect with you and, and we can figure everything out that way. But just wanted to make sure everybody was aware. Excellent. Yes, thank you, Roger. And we we do not serve pre-K at this moment. So we are, like Roger said, just kinder first in next year's second grade. So our mission, who are we? Heber Public uh, Schools are leading a national movement of exceptional diverse public charter schools that teach modern Hebrew to children of all backgrounds, and we prepare our students to be successful global citizens. And that is exactly what we do each and every day. So how do we do that? So our values are tied into Olam. And Olam is Hebrew for world, O standing for outstanding problem solvers, L for lifelong learners, A aware communicators, and M making a difference. And within that, we 
talk about this within our classrooms. We talk about it when we are together as a community. How do we become aware communicators? What does it mean to make a difference? We are lifelong learners. So even the adults in this building are continuing to learn um, and we learn from our mistakes. And then students, what does it look like when you have an, a problem or a conflict? How do we problem solve around that? So we, we live by our community values each and every day. And we employ our families to, to join us in that in those values. So this is our building. If you've ever driven down Midland Beach um, on Father Capadano, you might have seen this building last year. Roger, if you wanna to head to the next one, this is where we were <laughs> around this time last year. Uh, the building was under construction with scaffolding everywhere. Um, and then now, this is where we are in this beautiful state-of-the-art building um, right across from the beach. And you'll see some of those, the, the balconies on the top, those are our terraces where we had our ribbon cutting ceremony in October. Um, and our students use this space to have recess as well as uh, outdoor PE classes. This is one of our first grade classrooms. Uh, they are in their math class right now. They, we use Eureka for our math curriculum, which is, you know, it's a New York State curriculum. This is a kindergarten class. Um, this is our class learning phonics. This is our foundations content class right now. That's Mama Echo that you see right there. And the kids know all about Mama Echo and her little baby, baby Echo. So as they're learning phonological awareness and phonemes and everything that goes into understanding reading and understanding writing and understanding speaking, that all happens within this section of our day. And I do want to uh, give a plug very, very quickly. I feel like as we're looking at all these classrooms, um, to all the families that are joining us, uh, we do have some, I think, one more school tour scheduled for March uh, before the lottery. And then we will have many, many opportunities to come see the school after the uh, lottery. Um, but if you do want to sign up for our school tour, which is going to be next Tuesday, uh, if you visit sihebrewpublic.org, one of the first banners you'll see at the top is the school tour sign up. So uh, hopefully I can, we can meet you in person uh, next week. So that is my plug for school tours. Sorry about that. I love it. Thank you, Roger. And you'll see those teachers next week when you come to visit or after our lottery. Um, what can your child expect when they come into our building each and every day? So our doors open at 740. That is when arrival begins and students get the opportunity to have breakfast. Um, we have free meals for all students, breakfast, snack and lunch. Uh, from 7.40 to 8, that is when they have the opportunity to eat breakfast. And then we are a responsive classroom school, meaning that we prioritize community. And that morning meeting piece is critical to building a strong community within the classrooms as well as a school environment. And so from 8 to 8.20, that's a time where our, our classes come together and they talk about goals for the day. They greet one another. It's a really strong foundation to set the day up for success. And then you'll see there our core content, um, ELA, English Language Arts, we have math, uh, science, we also do guided reading, which um, is small group reading, our students have lunch and recess, so 20, 30, I'm sorry, 30 minutes for lunch and about 30 minutes for recess. Um, we also have writing within our ELA blocks. And uh, PE right now, our students receive, and then Hebrew. Every day, students will receive PE as well as Hebrew. And then part of that community building is not just starting the morning together on a, on a positive note, but ending on a positive note. So our closing circle is also critical uh, for students and our community to talk about glows and grows of the day and um, setting reflections and goals for the following day. 
I talked a little bit about what you could see in the in the classroom, a little bit about the curriculum that we use. Um, our academic overview is that we deplore rigorous and diverse academic program. This gives students the strong and academic social foundation that allows them to embody our Olam values. Um, it's like I was sharing with Roger at the beginning of the year or at the beginning of this meeting is that kindergarten, first grade, second grade, elementary is really where the foundation for a strong, strong academic success um, happens. And so we really want to make sure that all of our Olam values are being tied into the academics as well. And our students embody what it means to be a global citizen through our academics. Our ELA and math um, follow our New York State standards um, and our teachers, we work together to ensure that while we have this curriculum, we still personalize it to meet every student's needs because every student learns differently and we want to make sure that we meet them where they are so that we can grow them academically. Um, how we do that as well is we use data. We are a data data driven school. And three times a year, we use our benchmark, which is the NWEA math test. Um, so when you come on to with us next year, you'll hear all about this because it's important that families also understand student scores and student goals. Um, this test is individually done. And so it tests students where they are as an individual, not as a class. Um, and so it also helps us set goals for that student individually. Our science, um, it engages students through fostering their innate interest in science. And so it's a lot of inquiry based. We use a lot of questions and exploration. Um, students get to get their hands dirty. They, they work together, they ask questions, they think about what does it mean, uh, the world around us. And so we're really thinking about that inquiry and curiosity um, and data driven. So students are, are using a lot of data and they're thinking about what does this data tell me and how can I use it when I'm exploring or creating questions um, and having discussions with my classmates. Um, a lot of this we also see within our math as well. And so there's a lot of interdisciplinary that that happens throughout the day. Also, I just wanted to jump in and just shout out some of our uh, scientists in 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 first grade. Um, I, I think it was like the last time I was at the school, uh, I came in and they were doing a lesson on learning about the planets. And I was just like, so impressed by hearing the students talk about like which planets were their favorite and they knew so much about them already as first graders i was like kind of blown away um so a shout out to uh i think it was in miss cassia's class uh so i was i was blown away and really impressed by a lot of the science uh that instruction that was happening in the class when i was there so i think too um i'm, I'm gonna add to that roger if you can go back for a second mm -hmm. um in, in thinking about our students creating questions and being curious about their surroundings. In ELA, our students are being entomologists. So they're learning about bugs and insects. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And our students today, our kindergartners learned about, well, they learned about bees. I, I apologize. It was last week. Um, where they were learning about butterflies and a student asked um, caterpillars are myriapods, so they have multiple legs, and in, uh, butterflies are insects. And so the student asked, you know, when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, is it still a myriapod or does it turn into an insect? And so like the categorization of what type of insect is this uh, came from a student. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and so it was it was so great to have like students push our thinking as adults. And that's really what we want in in our in our students when it comes to their academic success. 100 percent. So Hebrew and Israeli studies, Maura Larissa is our amazing Hebrew teacher. Every day, our students receive 45 minutes of immersive Hebrew instru instruction. Um, and what that means, it's 100% taught in Hebrew, 100% um, choral response, 
peer-to-peer interaction in Hebrew, um, and it is phenomenal. Our students are having conversations with one another. Our students are asking questions in Hebrew. They're teaching me Hebrew. Um, they're teaching a lot of us Hebrew all through, and it's only March. And they had a, um, we had this beautiful festival at the end of January where they performed all in Hebrew. They performed songs and taught their families uh, a few things in Hebrew as well. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty special. Um, Maura Larissa does that through songs and books and, and games, um, as well as real life connection. So students learned about families. They learned about how to describe themselves. And um, they've learned about the weather, what kind of foods they like, what they don't like. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. They really enjoy Hebrew and learning about Israel and what it means to open up into other cultures and finding relations and connections from one culture to another. I think, uh, speaking of Maura Larissa, I think we have a video next that captures um, a Hebrew lesson to give you a taste yes. of what the proficiency-based approach looks like. So let me know if the audio works, Miss Misty. I was having a little bit of trouble with it, so hopefully we just get it the first try this time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was at the beginning of the year too, right, Roger? Yes, this was from, I would say, maybe uh, December, November, December, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we might have uh, one other video um, from a different Hebrew public school, but I love sharing it because I really think it kind of encapsulate what the proficiency-based approach looks like. Uh, kind of on a day to day. So I think we have one. Day. We'll get it. There we go. <laughs> uh, we don't, I don't hear it, Roger. I think this video, it's just not very loud because she's whispering. <laughs> Can you hear it now? So I, know, I always love sharing that video because mm -hmm. one of the things that you'll notice is during those Hebrew blocks, there is no English spoken by the mm -hmm. teacher. So it really is like you're getting, you know, a plane ride to Israel every day, mm -hmm. to just get immersed in the language. And some of the things that you notice in that video is how the teacher is kind of using hand movements or gestures mm -hmm. or repeating her directions. Uh, these are all kind of hallmarks of the proficiency-based approach, uh, and it's just kind of fun to see students go from, you know, maybe spoke, speaking no Hebrew at home um, to just kind of like watching their their comprehension and their knowledge and their speaking kind of grow. So I always like sharing that video. And it's also really great for our students as well because it levels the playing field for all students, right? We have many students in our community that speak multiple languages, and many of those languages are not Hebrew. Um, we also have students that come to us from other countries and English they have no understanding of yet. And so it really puts them all on the same playing field of let's learn Hebrew together. Let's learn something new together. Um, and so they're really working together and learning this language and understanding it as well as the culture that goes into a language. So we are a public school. Uh, part of our program is we have student support services as well. And so what this means is we have 
Uh, currently, two integrated co-teaching classrooms. We have ICT classrooms. Next year, we'll have one for second grade. Um, each grade has an ICT class. And uh, we provide speech, occupational, and physical therapy. Those are provided through outside uh, providers. We do in-house have a special education teacher support service. Uh, our SETS teacher, as well as the ELL down at the bottom, that last bullet, you'll see we have our MLL provider as well. Um, she's one in the two. She's our SETS as well as our MLL provider. Um, she is on our staff. Uh, if your child has an IEP and their IEP calls for a paraprofessional, that is also provided um, through the DOE. We have an amazing social worker who provides counseling, either mandated, so it's on the student's IEP, or as, as needed by the family and or the school um, as, a, as a way to support the child through social emotional um, recurrences. And I will also just jump in and share a part of our registration process. If you do uh, receive a seat uh, through the lottery, when you do register, one of our registration forms is um, a special education form. So if you already know your child might have an IEP or an individualized education plan or things like that, we're going to collect that information. And the more information you can share with us, uh, the sooner the better mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we're going to have all the supports and services that they're going to need from the very beginning so that they can be as successful as they can be. Absolutely. Thank you, Roger. We have the luxury of um, working with the JCC of Staten Island. We have this beautiful after school programming at Staten Island Hebrew Public. Um, they come to us Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays, our students get to go to the JCC and spend the, spend the afternoon there at their beautiful campus. The after school program looks anywhere from, well, they start at 3.30 and they go until six. And each day is a little different. They do arts and crafts. They do uh, team building activities. They also do sports up in our multi-purpose room. And they help our students with homework as well. In addition to that, there is a snack provided. Uh, this is a program that if you would like your child to be to attend, it's completely up to the family. Uh, it is a program that we offer, but it is not mandatory. Transportation, that lovely yellow bus. <laughs> so it is offered through our Department of Education office and the P uh, Office of Pupil Transportation. So you'll hear OPT. We do not at Staten Island Hebrew Public, we as a school do not do the busing routes and busing eligibility. All we do is provide your information to OPT. And from there, they create or they tell us about the route or uh, busing eligibility. You can always learn more at their website as well. Um, we also on our own have private busing because some of our students and families live further out of the radius that the OPT provides. And we are uh, diverse by design. And so we want every and all families to come join us. Um, and sometimes that can be hindered by the, re the, the regulations of OPT. And so we have provided our own busing to, to ensure that your child can, can join us in, in their learning experience. What does it look like in terms of our culture, our excitement, our joy that, that also happens outside of academics? So uh, once a month, we have special events and family engagement throughout the year, but once a month, we have some type of celebration. Every Friday, we have our Olam, which is our assembly hour that our students come together. You'll see that over on the right-hand side. Uh, in our cafeteria, we come together. That is our fall festival. We had a winter festival and we'll have a spring festival in May. Um, we just had our Black History Month celebration. We have our Women History Month celebration coming up. Um, so those are some of our bigger celebrations and our Olam hours are created by students, are created by teachers as well as our um, PE and Hebrew teacher. 
Uh, we will also have end of our year celebration as we wrap up the school year as well. But you can look forward to at least once a month, a big celebration happening at our school. So these are some, um, some trending questions and, and answers. So I'll go ahead and, and go through these one by one and then Roger and I can answer any other questions that you all have. So what can you expect in terms of a class size for your child? Right now, our class size is about 23. Next year, we're expecting about 25 to 27 per class. And it depends on if your child is in the general ed class or the um, ICT class. General ed, there is one teacher and a teacher assistant. And then the general, um, the ICT class, there are two teachers, a special ed teacher as well as a general ed teacher. When will we offer grades two through five? Like Roger explained at the beginning of our presentation, we are growing each and every year. So next year we will offer grade two, super excited about that. And then each, each year we'll add on and on. So the following year, third grade, and then fourth and fifth. How much outside and playtime will students have? A lot. <laughs> so they go out as, you know, weather depending. Um, and so our students go out for physical education as well as recess. Uh, playtime, they get three times a day. So PE, which is structured playtime, cooperative playtime. We also have recess, which is structured, but more like peer-to-peer -peer interaction, let's have these different types of hula hoop games. And then we also have choice time at the end of the day where students can create theater shows uh, where it becomes more uh, creative in the classroom. So there's tons of time for students to play um, and be children as well. Will there be a school nurse? Absolutely. We have our wonderful nurse Vimy this year. Um, our school nurse is provided through the DOE, the Department of Health. Um, and I answered this question a little earlier. My child doesn't speak Hebrew. Is that a disadvantage? Absolutely not. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a gateway into learning languages. It's a gateway into learning culture. It's a gateway into learning about our, our school, our, you know, global citizenship. It's, it's not a disadvantage. It's just, it's a, it's a different way for them to learn. And so it's, it's a great great experience. And you'll learn Hebrew as well through them. So um, I feel like we were super, super efficient in kind of like running through this presentation, but I do feel like it was a wonderful opportunity uh, for families that were watching to just really get a taste, get a sense of what a school day looks like um, for, 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 you know, your children for next year, hopefully. Um, and so we did promise that we would leave time at the end of the presentation um, for some Q&A. So if you do have questions or if you feel like there was maybe something that Misty and I didn't get a chance to cover, uh, we encourage you now, please feel free to drop any questions you have uh, into our chat box. We will be able to see them and we'll be more than happy uh, to answer any questions uh, that might be lingering. And so um, while uh, we'll give you a minute to drop any questions in. And so while we're doing that, I will just plug again. Um, if you have any questions about your application status um, or need help uh, submitting an application, you may certainly reach out to our enrollment team at admissions at hebrewpublic.org. Um, if you have not already submitted an application, again, we encourage you to do that before April 1st. Um, and we have the, you can do it from sihebrewpublic.org and click the apply button. You can go to hebrewpublic.org and, and find the application. It's all digital. Uh, it's offered in five different languages. So whatever one works best for you. Uh, and again, just as a reminder, our lottery date will be Wednesday, April 5th at 10 a.m. So our registration process, our lottery, everything now is just 100% digital. So the second the lottery ends, you're going to get your results, whether you've been offered a seat uh, or whatever your waitlist number is, uh, you will receive that right away. 
and you'll even be able to fill out all of your registration paperwork uh, from your phone, from your computer, from at home, if you would prefer to do it that way instead of coming to the school. Um, we use a software called Schoolment, which does all of that stuff. Uh, and it's really, really easy to use. And our registration will be available in whichever language uh, you need. If it is not English, we're, we're here to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, and so I feel like those uh, are all all the, the things that I, I wanted to remind uh, you guys about. And it looks like there are a lot of questions that are starting to come in. Um, so I am going to kind of gander through them here, Miss Misty. I can, and maybe, yeah, yeah, I can, can I can those. jump in with that first one. And I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Um, thank you so much for dropping your questions in the chat. So Bagarvi. Um, great questions. I'm going to do each one as, as I see it. So will there be nap time? No, which is a big transition for kindergartners. Um, so there will not be nap time. Um, is potty training necessary? Great question. Absolutely. Students need to be potty trained. They need to know how to use the toilet. Um, each classroom in first and kindergarten have their separate bathroom in the classroom, which is great. Um, and we're here to support children, but they do need to know how to use the restroom on their own. Um, if we have food restrictions due to religion, is food from home allowed? Absolutely. This is a great question. Um, that is also part of our registration too, right? Or there's a way for families to share that information so that we also have it on our end too, because we have celebrations, we have um, uh, moments in time when we provide food. And so we also want to know too, so that we um, respect those, those restrictions. Um, yes, Roger. I can just jump in a little bit too, because I realized maybe when we were putting this presentation together, just to make it very, very explicitly clear, because I see there are some things uh, regarding mm -hmm. like religion and food restrictions. So a few things. One, um, Staten Island Hebrew Public, we actually offer a kosher meal plan at the school. It's like Miss Misty said, it's open to all families. You mm -hmm. don't have to adhere to that meal plan. You can bring whatever food you want to bring in so long as it is nut and seed free. We're a nut and seed aware school. Yes. So we can't <laughs> share our food, um, but we just try to be very careful um, around things like that. So anything that you bring in, uh, it doesn't, doesn't have to be kosher, even though the, mm -hmm. the food that we serve in the school is. Um, and additionally, um, we are as a, a public charter school. So the school itself, we don't teach any religion, just I'm sure Correct. everybody already knows that. But just to be very explicitly clear, what we do is we teach Hebrew as a second language, which is uh, the language that is spoken in modern Israel. And there are many languages spoken there. And we do incorporate uh, Israel studies into our programming. Uh, but there, there is no religion uh, being taught at the school, just, just to be clear. Thank you, Roger. And we talk about celebrations that happen worldwide um, that can tie into religion, but we don't go in depth. We just talk about things that are coming up. We've talked about Diwali. We talk about um, uh, Lunar New Year. We talk about many celebrations because that is our community. Um, will there be a camera access for parents to see through the day? There is not. We are a public school. We cannot record students. Um, and if there are questions or if you're wondering how your child is doing throughout the day, we have an app that our teachers are a part of and our families are a part of and there can be communication, um, but there is no uh, footage throughout the day. What time is the tour on Tuesday, Roger? It is in person. It is indeed in person on Tuesday. Um, I'm sharing my screen right now. So uh, I can't check it right now. It's either at 9.30 or 10 a.m., I believe. I will confirm that for you in one second. But what I will say is I will plug again. Uh, I'm actually going to drop it here. It's, in it's, chat. it's at 10. I just checked my, my oh. phone. <laughs> there you go. Um, and if you want to go to sihebrewpublic.org, after our presentation, one of the very first things you'll see at the top of our website is a link to sign up for a tour or virtual open house. Um, and you'll be able to RSVP to that tour on Tuesday there. Great. Um, the next question is, what is the cost for after-school program? 
I don't know the numbers off the top of my head because there are different plans that families can sign up for. Uh, for example, if you want to do Monday through Friday for a month, um, it's a set price. If you want to do a few days here and there, that's a different price. Or if you just want to do one day, um, that is it, that's a price in, in and of its own. But if you are curious about that, you can, yes. I believe the five day a week program to do it every day for the month comes to it's either three hundred dollars or three hundred and thirty dollars. It's I think I, I want to say there's a three in there for sure, but I didn't want to misspeak. But yes, and I think that like one day a month is like a hundred dollars yep. or something That's like that. Exactly how I remember it, but it's all yeah. all part pricing, so kind of whatever mm -hmm. you need for your family. Um, JCC will accommodate, and I do believe. Um, that there are opportunities for some financial aid for families that need it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So we we try to, you know, and I know the JCC does a wonderful job of, of working mm -hmm. with all families and, you know, kind of whatever uh, you guys need, we'll do our best to, to make work for your family. Absolutely. Um, how will I know if um, your child got accepted to school? So on April 5th at 10 a.m. through the lottery, um, if you're not able to watch, that's A-OK. -okay. Like Roger said, you will receive notification if it's a yes or if your child is on the wait list. So you will find out either way. On in, the, <laughs> in the same way that families receive the message about our open house through Zoom, the reminder, um, you'll receive uh, a message by email and by text message the same way about the lottery results. Um, how many students will be joining us this coming year? Roger, our numbers are growing. We're looking at about 171 in total for next year. Uh, yeah. We're looking at about 54 per class, kinder first and second. Yeah. Um, and so we we do have, you know, many kindergarten and first grade students um, already with us. So obviously we will have fewer second grade and first grade seats um, to to offer through the lottery. But that being said, um, there will we will still make a few offers for those grades. And what I always tell families is, um, you know, if you feel like Staten Island Hebrew Public is the right school for you, we're going to do everything we can um, to to find a seat for your child. And, you know, just as a reminder, the only way to to get into the school um, is to submit that application. And, and so um, that that's my plug to make sure you do. that. <laughs> Um, Joy, your question is, if your daughter has an IEP, yes, we provide services. We have an ICT class um, in each grade. We also have services, speech, OT, PT. Um, we have a sets provider. Um, Roger shared earlier in the presentation, which was a great plug of when you um, enroll your child to make sure there is a spot in School Mint where you upload and share all the documentation. So just make sure that you have all that information ready to go because the more information we have before the first day of school, we can ensure that those services are being met immediately. Um, bullying, how do we deal with bullying in our school? So we are a responsive classroom. That's where a responsive classroom school, that means that we are focusing on a community um, and morning meeting and closing circle um, bookends our day in morning meeting. We talk about social emotional um, things that are going on in our lives. How do we cope? How do we um, handle conflict? How do we help or how do we um, how do we create skills within ourselves, a habits of telling somebody no, if they're not being nice, how do we say that? Um, and so we're really advocating, we're teaching students to advocate for themselves. We have a Dean of Students who is phenomenal. She am, is in classrooms every single day. I'm in classrooms every single day. And, and teachers have a really good handle on these type of things. And so there's a lot of communication. Uh, we handle it immediately. And bullying is different than a conflict. So we also want to make sure that it's a conflict or is it bullying? Bullying is a repeated behavior and there is um, imbalance of power, right? And so a conflict is 
they said this and then the student said this and there's like a back and forth right either way we handle them but we meet with the students we in, we involve families and we make sure that there is an action plan uh, for both parties uh, uh, in those incidents great question is there bus transportation from the after school there is not there is no bus transportation for the after school program. Uh, families will need to pick up their, their child from either our location of Father Capadano, Monday through Thursday, or on Friday from the JCC location on Manor Road. Um, Joy, that is not a question I can answer right now in terms of your zip code. Uh, Roger, I'm not sure if you would be able to. Yeah. So I will jump in here really quickly. Um, if you have a question, I know there's a lot of families joining, so we can't go through everything tonight. If you're a little curious about bus routes or I live here, can you help me out with that? Mm -hmm. Shoot us an email to admissions at hebrewpublic.org. And what I will do is I will connect with you just to give you a little bit more information about where the nearest bus route is or bus stop. But that being said, as our school continues to grow and we enroll more students, what typically happens with you know schools especially growing schools is we we will probably receive new bus stops and new bus routes next year um, because we'll be you know growing our school so much and so I always hesitate to you know share with families yeah. routes because a lot can change next year and we mm -hmm. could get even more bus routes uh, and more buses and and you might end up getting something that's even more convenient um, mm -hmm. But that being said, if you do want to reach out, shoot us an email and we can at least kind of give you a ballpark idea of what to expect. Ms. Missy, I feel I like we're good. I think we've kind of gotten through all, yeah. all of the questions and, and um, I just want to say again to all the families um, that joined us tonight, we're really, really excited uh, to welcome your family to our school community. Um, we can't wait for next year. Uh, we recorded this session, so if there was anything you missed, don't worry. Um, you are going to get this uh, tomorrow afternoon, this recording. Um, and I just want to take a second to thank you, Miss Misty, and uh, again, to all the families that joined us tonight. Uh, and we hope that you learned a lot, and uh, we hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day. So good night, everybody. And that you come see us next Tuesday. See us in action. Indeed. Come <laughs> see us. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye. Shalom.